Okay, let me show you guys how to solve this application problem that involves a bearing. Right here it says, radial direction finders are placed at points A and B, which are 3.46 miles apart on an east-west line. And we also know that A is west of B, okay? And right here it says, from A, the bearing of a certain radial transmitter is 47.7 degrees. And from B, the bearing is 302.5 degrees. We are going to find the distance of the transmitter from A. And for all these kind of questions, we definitely have to draw a picture first, right? And first of all, let me just say this is my point A, and I'll draw a horizontal line. Let's say right here is my point B. A is on the west, B is on the east. And we know that they are 3.46 miles apart, right? And let me just write this down without putting on units. We will just put on the unit at the end. Okay, let's look at this information here. We have from A, the bearing of a certain radial transmitter is 47.7 degrees. And you see that this angle right here is the bearing. And it doesn't tell us if it's north, south, east, or west. It doesn't have any direction in the front or in the back, right? In this situation, where we are just given an angle, it's always, always, always we start with the north direction like this, right? By default, okay, we always look up to the north direction. And then 47.7 degrees, we always turn from the north pole and then counterclockwise. Every single time when we don't have any directions, you do this, north and then counterclockwise. In this case, we have to turn 47.7 degrees. So it's going to be like this, right? So let me just indicate that this is my 47.7 degrees. And we have to look at this direction now. But I don't know how far I have to go. If you would like, you can just draw a straight line like this. But I don't know though, right? I don't know when I have to stop. We have to look at the other information. From B, the bearing is 302.5 degrees. Same situation, like this, right? We are not given any of the directions, east, west, whatsoever, south, north. <laughs> in, this case, in this case, we also look up, okay? Start from the north first. And then we turn clockwise. In this case, we have to turn 302.5 degrees. And let's just keep track. From to here to here, this is what? 180 degrees, right? And then we come back to here, since this was horizontal, this is vertical, you know this much right here is 270 degrees already. We need to get a total of 302.5 degrees, right? That means I have to go up 32.5 degrees more. So let me just indicate this much more, all right? Something like this. And this is the direction I want to look at. See, it's from here, and I want to look at that direction. And of course, I'm just going to complete this triangle. I will just have to draw my third side from point B and extend it to that. So that's the triangle that we have. I don't have to go this far right here. All right, so it's uh, the triangle like this. And in red, let me just indicate that that was 302.5 degrees. Okay. We should definitely find the angles inside of the triangles, right? So we have to find out what angle A is. I will just call this angle A inside of the triangle. And this will be angle B. And then we have, well, A and B, of course, we can call this to be C, right? And let's figure that out first. So we'll measure angle A. Let's take a look. North, it's straight up. And then this is horizontal. Vertical and horizontal makes 90 degrees. This much right here in red was 47.7 degrees already. This, the angle in black, which is angle A, it's just going to be 90 degrees minus that, right? So let's do that. 90 degrees minus 47.7 degrees. And of course, we can just subtract. And you will get 42.3 degrees, right? So I will indicate this right here for you guys, 42.3 degrees. And then we will also have to find out angle B. Okay, from here to here, you know, from here to here, right here, right? As we talk about it, it was 270 already, but we went a little bit more. 
for measure angle B, the whole thing was 302.5 degrees, but from here to here, it was 270. So we have to subtract 270 degrees. And this is going to give us 32.5 degrees. And this is going to be the angle inside right here. And let's just put that down, 32.5 degrees, like that. OK, and that's the degree symbol. At the end, of course, we have to find out the measure of angle C. And because if you have the measure of angle C, you see this angle and this side. Well, C and C match. We can use law of sine, isn't it? So that will be wonderful. For measure of angle C, we can just do 180 minus this minus that. So let's see that. 180 degrees minus 42.3 degrees minus 32.5 degrees. And just subtract, subtract, subtract. This is going to give you guys 105.2 degrees. OK? Let's do it on the calculator whatsoever. And let me put this right here. Notice that this is not right triangle, right? Because the C angle is 105.2 degrees. OK, so this is pretty much how we can have that triangle. And now, let's go back to the question. It says, we are going to find the distance from the transmitter, uh, well, from A to the transmitter, right? C was the transmitter. So this is what we have right here. If you would like, can draw like a little whatever, like this, that's the radio transmitter. Anyway, I need to go from A to C. Well, let's do some labeling. This is angle C, so if I go away like this right here, I will label this as little c, right, for this side. This right here was angle B. If I go away, I will label this as little b, isn't it? And in my case, I just need to find little b. That will be the distance from A to C. That's all I have to do. And once again, because we have C and C already, we can use law of sine. And let's do that right here. Let me put down sine capital C over little c. This is going to be, we have to use B, angle B and this little b, because we are trying to find the distance from A to C. Just depends on the label, OK? So we have to use the B. Right here, we have to put down sine capital B over little b. This is the version of the law of sine that we use, right? This part of the law of sine. OK, plug-in values. Capital C is 105.2. So we have sine of 105.2 degrees over little c, which is 3.46. So let's just divide by 3.46 right here. And this should be equal to sine b, which is 32.5 degrees. So let me just put that down, 32.5 degrees over little b, which we don't know, and that's what we're trying to find, right? OK, then we can, of course, just cross multiply if you would like. And if you have other ways to do it, it's up to you as well. But we'll just do this times that, which is b times sine of 105.2 degrees. And this times that is 3.46 times sine of 32.5 degrees. And then, of course, we can divide both sides by this. And let me just draw this better for you guys. Divide both sides by sine of 105.2 degrees. So that this that will cancel. Divide this right here. Sine of 105.2 degrees. And now, B is approximately, and just use the calculator to do this, right? And you will get about 1.93, OK? And that will be this distance right here. However, just to make this fancier, because we're dealing with a situation question, right? This is how we should present the question. Well, I mean, this is how we should present the answer. We should then just put down B is equal to 1.93 miles. We should go back to the question and then just write this down in a complete sentence. So here is the answer. I'll just tell you guys that uh, the distance from the transmitter, well, from A to the transmitter, let me just phrase it this way, to the radio transmitter is about, about 
1.93 miles, all right? So the distance from A to the transmitter is about 1.93 miles. And that's it. Okay, let me show you guys how to solve this application problem that deal with the bearing. Right here it says, two ranger stations are located on an east-west line, and they are 100 miles away from each other. And right here it also says that we have a fire that's located on a bearing of north 42 degree east from station A. And we know station A is on the west side. And we also know that a bearing of north 15 degree east from station B and B is on the east side. And the question is, we need to know how far is the fire from each station. And suppose you are on one of the region stations, if you are closer, then it will be your job to go and then you know, pull out the fire, right? Anyway, to solve this kind of questions, we must draw a picture. So here we go, let's draw the A and B stations right here, right? So let me just say A is right here, which is on the west side. And we know we have to go 100 miles away like this, this is going to be the B, so this is 100, and let's not put on the units, let me just draw 100 like that. And now, right here it says, the fire is located on a bearing of north 42 degree east from station A, so this is going to tell us, let's go to A first, and I have to look up to the north direction, so I'm going to draw a straight line up like this, this is the north direction. And I will have to turn 42 degrees east. That means from here, I will have to turn to the right, because that's the east direction, right? So we have to turn 42 degrees, so it's going to look like this, something like that. And this right here is 42 degrees. And this is just the direction. I don't know how long this is going to be, okay? I don't know how long this is going to be. So let me just kind of draw it. Let me just extend this line like this, maybe. All right? I don't know when I will stop though. And on the other hand, we have a bearing of north 15 degree east from station B. So similarly on B right here, we first look up, this is the north direction, and we have to turn 15 degree toward the east side, which is toward the right again. So I just have to turn a little bit right here, right? This much is the 15 degrees. Hopefully you guys can see it. And this is the direction of the goal, isn't it? And once again, I don't know how far this is going to extend. I will just have to draw it. I'm just going to extend it. And of course, we're talking about the same fire, so they will have to meet somewhere. And let me just say, they are going to meet right here. And let me just draw my picture better so it looks like a triangle, all right? So this is the picture that we should have, something like this. Hopefully, you guys don't mind. Anyway, here is the fire. Let me just indicate that with fire in red, all right? Like that. Here's A, here's B. I will just call C to be the uh, location of the fire. Anyway, uh, this is the triangle that we have, and we have this side. Ideally speaking, we should find out all the angles inside of the triangle so that maybe we can use law of sine or law of cosine because this is not right triangle, right? Okay. Let's figure out what's angle A, and let me just show you guys the work right here. Measure of angle A, you see, earlier when you look up, that's the north direction, and this right here is horizontal, so altogether it's 90 degrees. And this much right here in red is 42 degrees already. So to find out the measure of angle A, we just have to do 90 degrees minus 42 degrees, which is going to give us 48 degrees, all right? And I'll label this right here for you guys. Here is the 48 degrees. And now let's solve for measure angle B. So it's this right here that we're talking about. Okay, you see, this is horizontal in black, and this is vertical in red. So this right here is 90 degrees, isn't it? Yeah, this right here is 90 degrees. And earlier, we turned 15 degrees more. So altogether, from here to here, this is the total of 105 because we have to do 90 degrees plus 15 degrees and that will give us 105 degrees. And that will be measure angle B. So let me just indicate that for you guys right here. And lastly, once we have this angle and that angle inside of the triangle, for measure angle C, which is 
right here, measure of angle C. We know altogether they have to add up to be 180 degrees, right? So we just have to do 180 degrees minus 48 degrees minus 105 degrees. And altogether, just subtract, you end up with 27 degrees. And that's going to be measure of angle C right here. So this is how we fill in all the information. And now, the question is asking us, how far is the fire from each, each station, right? So I need to figure out this side and likewise from this side, right? And this is how we do a labeling in this kind of triangle. This is measure, this is angle a, B, right? This is measure, this, this is angle B. When you go away, when you go across, I will label this side as little b. And likewise, this is angle A. When I go away, or we'll go across from this angle, this side is going to be little a. And since this is capital C, when you go across, this is going to be labeled as little c, right? And now you know we have an angle and a side, right? C and C, they match. So it's good that we can use law of sine. So let me just set this up for you guys. We'll use law of sine. So first, let's put down sine of C over C. This is capital C. This is little c. And we know this is going to be the same as, let's solve for little a first, if you guys don't mind. Well, C and C match. You know the other one, the setup will be sine of A and little a, like that, right? OK, so we're just going to be plugging numbers. C is 27 degrees, so on the left-hand side, we have sine of 27 degrees over little c, which is 100. So let me just put this down right here. And that will be equal to sine of A. We know what A is, which is 48 degrees. So let's put that down right here. Oops, 48 degrees over little a, which that's the variable that we're trying to solve. So let's put down A right here. And now, if you would like, you can cross multiply or solve it whichever way that you prefer. But I will cross multiply for you guys, like this, all right? This times that, we will have A times sine of 27 degrees, and then this times that, which is 100 times sine of 48 degrees, right? And then I will have to divide both sides by this, sine of 27 degrees, and right here as well, sine of 27 degrees. So that this and that will cancel. At the end, you can just get A is about equal to, you punch all this onto your calculator, right? And be sure your calculator is in the degree mode. And after you work this out, you will get the A value. It's about 163.69. And that's this side right here, right? And then you can come here and then just label that if you would like. OK, and now let's solve for B. Similarly, I will just use sine C over C. This is going to give us sine B over little b, right? So I'll just put this down right here for you guys. C and C, we know that right here already. So let's put this down, sine of 27 degrees over 100. And this is equal to sine B, which is 105 degrees. So let's put that down right here. Over little b, we don't know. So let's put that down. And once again, we can cross multiply. And this is going to give us b times that, b times sine of 27 degrees. And that will be 100 times this, right? 100 times sine of 105 degree. And now, of course, do the same thing. Divide both sides by sine of 27 degrees. Divide this by sine of 27 degrees as well. Cancel this out. And we see b is about equal to Work this out on your calculator, and you will get this is approximately 212.76. Okay? So we are pretty much done. However, this is a situation problem. We have to answer it with a complete sentence, all right? Because if you just say A and B, it doesn't really make that much sense. Because this A does not tell you the distance from the fire to station A. This A tells you the distance from the fire to station B, right? This is how we like to label it. So here is how we are going to answer the question. I will just say the fire is 
163.69 miles, approximately speaking, right? The fire is 163.69 miles from station what? Station B, okay? And on the other hand, when you have the little b value, this is actually the distance from the fire to the station A, right? So I will just tell you guys right here. On the other hand, the fire is 212.67 miles from station A, right? And this is how you should answer the question whenever you have a situation. And that's it. Okay, I'm going to show you guys how to solve this application problem that involves bearing. So let's take a look. We have an airplane that flies 180 miles from point A at a bearing of 125 degrees, and then turns and flies at another bearing of 230 degrees for another 100 miles. At the end, we're going to find out how far is the airplane from the original point A. Of course, we know we had to draw a picture along the way, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Let me just say this right here is my starting point A. And now let's take a look at what we have. From A, first of all, we have a bearing of 125 degrees. And you see this right here, it doesn't tell us north, south, east, west, whatsoever, right? By default, when we have a bearing, and if we just have an angle that's given, we always look up to the north direction, okay? And then we have to turn this much degree clockwise. So from north, we'll, cut, we'll turn clockwise 125 degrees. And also another tip for you guys. Whenever we are drawing a picture to illustrate the situation, the picture doesn't have to be perfect, but be sure our picture has to be reasonable. Anyway, so from here, we have to turn 125 degrees. All right, so from here to here, this is 90 degrees, isn't it? And I have to go for another 35 more. So it's about like this. And I will be looking at this direction from point A, all right? And in fact, I know how far I traveled it, which is 180 miles. So I'm going to go from this point, and I'm just going to draw 180 miles. So let me just draw this right here to be my 180, all right? This is 180 miles. And I'll stop right here. And let me just call this being point B right here. And now, once we're at this point, we are going to turn and fly at another bearing of 230 degrees for 100 miles, right? Same situation. We are just having an angle right here. So this means we have to look up to the north direction and we have to turn clockwise with 230 degrees, right? So let's see, from here to here, this is 180 degrees, right? And we have to go for another 50 more in order to get the whole 230 degrees. And now this is my 230 degrees and this is the direction I have to look at, isn't it? Just like something like that. From here, we have to go 100 miles. And you know this right here is 180, so 100 miles is going to be like, maybe something like this, right? Because if you look at, this is 100 and that's about 180, something like that. So this is 100, let me just put this down right here. And we're pretty much done. This will be the end, right? The airplane will be right here at the end. And the question is asking us, how far is the airplane from here to our, from our starting point A? So we'll just connect the dots from here to here, and here we have it, that's our triangle. And of course, A, B, and C, right? So let me just label this as C. And now, um, we are trying to find out what this is. And based on our usual way to label triangles, since this is B already, I will label this side as little b, and I'm trying to find out what little b is, isn't it? Okay, I don't think this is going to be a right triangle, so, we should figure out the angles inside of the triangle so that maybe we can use either law of sine or law of cosine, right? And let's take a look. This right here we know is 125, but this right here, I cannot say too much about it. 
because you see this right here in red well this is not straight down this sign black is not straight down it's not necessary I cannot be sure this angle is not 180 minus 125 it's not like that okay I cannot be sure about that hmm and we know this right here is 230 degrees but but, but what well, if this is 230 degrees, and then earlier we mentioned it, that this from here to here, it was 50, because we did a 180, and then, you know, we had to go from 180, 50 more to get 230, right? So let me do this. Right here, let me just look at this line. Let me just extend it. This is the north-south line, all right? And we know this little angle in red, it will be 50 degrees and this is 180 right because the whole thing will be uh, 230 so let me just tell you guys this is the whole thing 230 degrees and for the 50 degree you know you know 230 minus 180 is 50 okay so that's pretty good all right now I'm trying to find out what this is and in fact I really care about this angle because if I can find out what this angle is, notice that we have this side and then this angle in between of the other side that we know. This is a side, angle, side situation. We can use law of cosine to help us to find out the third side. So I really want you to know this angle rather than the other two. I don't really care about this for that. Hmm. This is 50. I haven't really utilized this yet though. So Let's see, I will also do the same thing. Let me just draw a straight line right here as well. All right? And this right here, I should have indicated that for you guys, this is 125 degrees. Can I label 125 degrees somewhere as well though? Yes, in fact we can, right? Because if you look at this line blue and this line blue, they are actually parallel because they are both vertical lines, right? And let me just make a note on the side for you guys, right here. When we have two parallel lines, and let me just draw the parallel lines like this, and when you have a line that go across them, and this is called a transversal, what we get is we can say that this angle and that angle will be the same, will be congruent. This is called the alternate interior angle, right? Something like that. I don't remember the exact thing. Anyway, but most importantly, this and that have to be the same. If you have 125 here, well, this side in black with the 180, it's the line that cuts through this and that, right? So I can tell you that this much from this side to the blue, it will be 125 as well. Let me just label this 125 degrees, right? By that. Okay, with this being done, can we find out what this angle is? This angle in black, let me just draw it bigger. All right, measure angle B. It has to be 125 minus 50. You see, this is the 15 in red that we put down earlier, isn't it? Right? So let me just put down 125 degrees, and then we will minus 50 degrees. And of course, we can totally work this out. This is just going to be 75 degrees. And let me just label this right here. And this is the angle in black that we want, right? And now we're ready to use love cosine to solve for this B right here. And let me just do the labeling. This is B, right? And then since this is C, this will be little c. And since this was A, this will be little a. And the version of the law of cosine that I'm going to put it down for you guys is the following. This side, which I don't know, I'll put this down first. So we have b squared. It will be the other sides. You square them individually, and then you add them up, right? So I'll put down a first square, and you add it with c squared, OK? And you see, this is what we have now. And then we have to minus 2 times a and c. So we'll just put down 2ac. And then here is the cosine part. Multiply this by cosine of capital B. This angle has to be corresponding to that, right? So it's capital B. If you use little b, this will be capital B. Okay, so we are ready to go. Let me just put this down for you guys. 
B squared is equal to A, which is 100 based on my labeling. So we have 100 squared, and then we add it with C, which is 180. So let's also put that down right here. And we square that, and then minus 2 times A, so 2 times 100 times C, which is 180, and then times cosine of B, cosine of 75 degrees. So let me put this down right here, cosine of 75 degrees, like this. And you see, on the left-hand side, this is B squared. This is what you can do. You can just and take the positive square root only. This and that will be cancelled, and you'll get the B by itself. Uh, we'll get an approximation for this. And put everything right here onto your calculator, all right? Just use your calculator and just like make sure you enter everything correctly. And be sure your angle is in the degree mode, all right? And also in the square root. And if you work this out, you'll get B is approximately 181.89. This right here is this side. And you have to answer the question according to uh, the phrase right here, right? How far is the airplane from point A? It's right here. So here is the answer. I'm going to write it down for you guys in a complete sentence. So the airplane is about, you don't need to read it out, write it about if you don't want to, 181.89 miles away from point A, right? So this right here is how we are going to present our answer, and that's it.